Good morning, boys and girls. Welcome to Kids Connection, a place where we learn how to connect with each other and with God. My name is Audrey Zorik, director of Kids Connection here at Vallejo Drive Church. If this is your first time, we want to welcome you and invite you to come back each and every Sabbath for a new program where we learn how to connect with God through different stories, songs, and activities. And if you are a regular, we want to welcome you back. I am so happy that you decided to join us today. Now today is a special day. In addition to being Sabbath, and we have a special program prepared for you, it's also 4th of July. Whoa, what a celebration. It is a different 4th of July this year because we can't go out to par for parades, we can't go out for uh, fireworks, but it is 4th of July, and I hope that you guys get to celebrate 4th of July at home with mom and dad too, okay? Now, speaking of celebration, today, being 4th of July and being Sabbath, we are going to invite someone to be here and celebrate Kids Connection with us. So, and let's call out his name. You know who I'm talking about. It's been a while since we haven't had a kid here with us. So, kid, kid, come on out. Oh, here's kid. Hello, kid. Good to see you. Wow, I'm so happy that kid is here with us today at Kids Connection. It has been a while since last time we saw you, kid. We miss you so much, kid. We've been taking Kid to visit you guys, to visit some of the kids, and, and we've been driving him around. But Kid actually uh, hasn't been here at Kids Connection, but today is a special day. I'm happy that you're here with us today, Kid. Welcome to Kids Connection. Do you guys miss Kid? Do you miss being here? Me too. Kid, there are a lot of kids out there that really miss being with you and hugging you, Kid. But don't worry. We pray that all this goes away soon and we get to spend some time with Kid and here at Kids Connection. Right, Kid? Excellent, excellent. Today, I'm happy because it's Sabbath, because you guys are here, I'm here, Kid is here, and what about if we start singing our song of the day together? Yes? Let's get our program started and we'll be talking about a couple things right after the song. So get up, let's start moving and sing our song of the day. Me! 
If God is for us, who can be against us, right? That was an amazing song. We had so much fun singing that song right here at Kids Connection. Hopefully you guys got to sing it at home too and have fun. Now, I'm gonna invite you to close your eyes, bow your heads so we can talk to Jesus. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for another Kids Connection program. Thank you for your love and for your protection. We ask that you be with each boy and girl as we listen to this program today. And may everything that we do here be only to glorify your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Wonderful. Now, let me ask you something. Have you ever found something that was lost and you rebuilt that thing? Kid? Have you? Yes, I have done that too. One time I found a toy that I had lost long, long, long time ago. And I had to clean that toy, fix it, and then I could play it again with that toy. But after that, it was so much fun. Well, in today's missionary story, we're gonna see a story of a, some people in other places in the world where they found something that was abandoned and they are now trying to rebuild what it was abandoned for a long time and our offerings are actually going to help them rebuild something that they found let's watch our missionary story these ruins used to be a beautiful church now this place has been claimed by plants but hope is not gone just like these plants the Seventh-day Adventist Church took root in this country nearly 100 years ago. In 1926, the first Adventist missionaries to Liberia, R. Helbig and E. Flammer, arrived. A year later, these German missionaries established Liberia's first Adventist church. I started going to church here in 1989 by my, uh, my late father, who was once a deacon of the church. He used to carry me to church when I was a little and brought the school here and they encouraged us, the young children from the church, to come here and go to school. There I was in the school and then he talked to me uh, to join the baptismal class in the church. So at that time I used to come, with, come to church by my dad, but I was not too regular. But from his effort, I was able to become beings and become a member of the church. After Elder May was baptized, the first Liberian civil war erupted. Political and military conflict forced many church members to flee. During the war, both the church and the school were burnt down by rebels. We could hear gunshot. Yeah, we could hear gunshot. So those who left behind gave us the information that your church is broken down, is being burnt. A place which was once a blessing and a source of joy was now reduced to ruins. But after the conflict subsided, a faithful group worshipped in the only area that survived the destruction. To this day, they joyfully worship together and are confident that if the place is rebuilt, the congregation can be restored to what it once was. Sadly, this small group's funds are limited. It would take a miracle for them to reconstruct even a portion of the building. If I had money, I would do it on my own. With the congregation that we have here, we are not able to even face one structure here. So my anticipation is for the World Church to come to our aid so that this place can be rebuilt. Your 13th Sabbath offering will help rebuild the birthplace of the Seventh-day Adventist Church in Liberia, where a place of worship and a school can be established again. Please pray for God's people in Liberia so that this dream can become a reality. Thank you for your support of the 13th Sabbath offering this quarter. Let's remember the missionaries in our prayers as they continue to find places and to build churches to worship God and share the love of God with other people. Thank you so much for your support. Now, today, I'm gonna share a story with you. A story of a boy. There was a boy named Marcus. Marcus was seven years old. And Marcus really, really liked candies. Do you like candies? I like candies. 
Do you like chocolate? Do you like cake? Do you like ice cream? <gasps> ice cream is so good, especially now with a hot day as it is, right? A nice cup of ice cream is awesome. So Marcus liked candies. And one day, mom and dad said, Marcus, we're gonna go somewhere and you're gonna stay here with your older brother. But remember, don't eat too much candy. When mom and dad come back, we are going to tell you how much candy you can have. Mom and dad left. They went to do some, uh, to run some errands. And when they left, Marcus was looking at a big jar, this big jar of candy. And Marcus was thinking, oh no, why can't I eat this candy? They are so good. Maybe I can eat just one. So Marcus disobeyed mom and he opened the candy and he ate it. Oh, it was so good, so yummy. And Marcus finished that candy and he said, oh, but this is so good. Why doesn't mom and dad want me to eat the candy? So I'm going to eat just one more, just one more candy. And, and he grabbed another candy and he opened and he ate another candy. Oh, no, 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 this is wrong. But wait, why is it wrong? Candy is so good. No, I can't, I, I, it can't be wrong to eat candy. It can't be wrong. Why is mom and dad not letting me eat all this candy? I'm gonna eat one more because this is so good. Then he opened another candy and he ate that candy again. And uh, he couldn't control himself. And after that, he opened another candy and he ate that candy again. And one more, and one more, and one more. And Marcus ate almost the entire bowl of candies. Oh, whoa! As soon as he realized that there were only a few candies left on the bottom of that candy bowl, Marcus said, Wow, mom and dad asked me not to eat the candies. And I ate it almost the whole thing. But Marcus kept thinking, why I, why is, why is mom, mom and dad telling me not to eat the candies? If candies is so good, it's so sweet, why are they telling me not to eat it? I can't believe that mom and dad are, don't, don't let me do something that is, is so good for me. Good, candy is good, Marcus thought. All of a sudden, Marcus started feeling a little funny feeling on his stomach. And Marcus didn't know what it was. And Marcus said, oh, maybe if I eat a couple more candies, it'll, it'll help my stomach. But his stomach started making this sound. And Marcus, he didn't know what it was. And ow, 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 it's hurting. Oh no, my stomach is hurting. I, I'm gonna drink some water. And he grabbed some, a big cup of water and he drank that water and all that water didn't make him feel any better. And he said, I'm gonna drink some juice and he got a cup of juice and he drank juice and it didn't help at all. All of a sudden, Marcus started feeling dizzy. And he was dizzy and his stomach was hurting and he couldn't stand up. So Marcus lay down and all of a sudden, he hears something. The door opened and mom and dad came home. Oh no, mom and dad are home and mom and dad walked in and they saw Marcus 
on the couch, laying down with his hands on his stomach and with a face like he's in real pain. And mom and dad knew exactly what had happened. They turned around and they looked, they looked at the bowl of candies and it was almost empty. And they said, Marcus, what did you do? And Marcus said, Mom and Dad, I ate all the candies. Marcus, we have to take you to the hospital now because of all the candy that you ate. And Mom and Dad got Marcus in the car and they drove him to the hospital. While at the hospital and the doctor was looking at Marcus, Marcus, the doctor said, Marcus, why did you eat all those candies? And Marcus said, Doctor, I don't know why I couldn't eat the candies. If they were so good, I couldn't resist them. I didn't know why mom and dad was, they were telling me not to eat it. And the doctor said, you know Marcus, just because we think something is good, it's up to us to obey. Mom and dad are going to tell you what's right and what's best for you. And sometimes it may sound a little harsh and we may think that mom and dad don't like us. But you know what, Marcus? They know what's best for you. And if they told you not to eat the candy, it's because they knew what could have happened to you. And here you are seeing the doctor because of all the candy that you ate. The doctor gave him some medicine and to make his stomach feel a little his stomach to feel a little better, and they went home. When they got home, Marcus said, Mom, Dad, I am so sorry that I ate all those candy. I didn't know that you were looking out for my best. I didn't know what too much candy would do to me. And I thought that you just didn't want me to eat any candy at all. You know, kids, in today's lesson, we are going to learn something about the Bible, a story in the Bible, that God gave some people the freedom for, for them to choose what they wanted. A couple, to be more exact. exact. A man and a woman. And God said something to them, and God, but God also gave them the freedom to choose. And this is something that God gives us. God tells us what's right, what's wrong, and He let us choose. Because remember what we talked about last week? Our lives is full of choices. We have to decide everything. I had to decide to be here today and do the Kids Connection program. It's all about choices and you chose to be here sitting on your couch, looking at your computer or TV or your mom's phone and watching the program today. This was all done because you chose. Now, having the right choice is hard. Sometimes we may look at something and think that something is really good and it can't be wrong. Why something that good can be wrong? Well, the same way that Marcus chose something that he thought it was good, but it turned out to be bad for his stomach because he ate too much, sometimes we do the same thing. We choose something thinking that we're choosing the right thing, but it's actually not. Let's pay attention to our story today and see what happened to this man and this woman as they chose the things by themselves and when God allowed them to make those choices. So now I'm going to invite you to sing our song of the day with us. And kid, come on out here, kid. Let's sing our song of the day together again as we finish our program.
Dear Jesus, thank you so much for loving us and for giving us the freedom of choice. Help us to choose right each time and may everything that we do be to, be to glorify your name. Help us to know what's right and what's wrong. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you so much for participating in another Kids Connection program. Uh, Kid just went out to get a friend of ours and because it is 4th of July weekend, we have a little, kid, come on out here. We have a little friend. Here, let me show, let me show the kids. All right, so it is 4th of July, and this is Rosie. Do you guys remember Rosie, how tiny she was? Well, look at her. She's a little bit big now, and uh, we have her dressed up as 4th of July. She's ready to celebrate 4th of July. Today's 4th of July. Um, and I hope that you guys do something fun at home too, celebrating 4th of July. Dress up with the American flag, or take some pictures, Send us those pictures. We'd love to see you guys. We'd love to get in touch. Our email is bbkidsconnection at gmail.com. Okay, kid? Are you going to celebrate 4th of July today, kid? Are you going to dress up? Kid is going to dress up. He's going to put an American flag. He's going to put an American t-shirt and, and maybe a hat. Wait, do we have a hat that big? Whoa, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but let us know what happened. Let us know how you guys celebrate 4th of July, okay? Ask mom and dad to send us an email and send us a note. We would love to hear to read your note here on Kids Connection here in the air, okay? Wonderful. Now, also, I want to give a shout out. Uh, mom got in touch with us this week. And kid, someone turned six yesterday. And mom sent us a note saying that Jacob Jacob turned six years old yesterday. Happy birthday, Jacob. Uh, we also have Kid that is scheduled to come and visit you. So Jacob, get ready. One of these days, Kid is gonna come by and he's gonna say hello. I'm gonna drive Kid. Tomorrow, Kid is actually doing something. Today, this afternoon, he's, going, he's doing a ministry. He's helping other places, so we can't go there. But don't worry, one of these days we're gonna touch with mom and we're gonna drive kid to your place. And you guys, if you want kid to come and visit you, kid, are you happy to visit the kids? Are you happy to visit all the boys and girls? Kid is super happy and I'm so excited to drive kid to your house. So let us know, we'll drive over there, we'll say hello from a distance, we'll take some pictures, we'll have Rosie with us in the car, we'll have Rosie say hello to you too, okay? So come back next week for another Kids Connection program. I love you guys, I miss you guys so much, and we'll see you next Sabbath. Thank you for watching, bye-bye, bye-bye. Well, good morning, boys and girls. It's good to see you today. I'd like to welcome some of you. We have today Federico and Francisco, and Reese, Tyel, and Estella, Zori, and the new baby, Joshua, Jael, and Joy, 
Aaliyah and Ethan, Amy and Cameron, welcome. Sunny, Rio and Gia and Aiden, Benjamin, Carlina and Sammy, Max and Vita, Janie, Jade and Jax, nice to see you today. We have Nicholas and Luke and John, Andrea and Ariane and Vashti and Moses, Will and Mia, Caitlin, JR and Seth and Josiah, welcome everybody. I decided to film myself from this side of the room today. I wanted you to see how your classroom is looking and I wanted to just tell you how much I miss you and hope to see you again soon. Well, let's talk about our lesson for today. The story I want to tell you today is the story of how God created our world. God decided he was going to build a new world, so he looked for the perfect spot to make it, and he found it. The place was very, very dark, so he said, let there be light. And that was day number one. On day number two, he made the air that we breathe. And on day number three, he made the dry land appear and all the plants grew. And then on the next day, day number four, he made the sun, the moon, and the stars. He knew we would need some lights. On day five, he made the birds and the fishes. And then on day six, he made animals and our first parents, Adam and Eve. Then on day seven, he rested. He was finished with all the work that he had done. And do you know what he said about all of the beautiful things on the earth? He said, it is very good. Well, God had made a beautiful world for his children. And he said that it was very good. He had made animals, and he made fishes and birds, he made flowers and trees and grass, and he made trees, trees for Adam and Eve to eat from. There were all kinds of trees, fruit trees and walnut trees and cashews and all kinds of yummy and delicious things that they could eat from. He had made two trees in the garden that had special fruit. And the first tree was called the tree of life. Now they could eat from that tree at any time. Whenever they wanted to eat from that tree, they could. Now the second tree was called the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And God had said, do not eat from that tree. That was the only rule that God gave him. They should not eat fruit from that tree. Now Adam and Eve were very happy in their beautiful garden home. They gave all the animals names such as a giraffe or a horse and they went and ate fruit from the trees. They took care of the flowers and plants. They were very, very happy, just as God intended them to be. One day, Eve wandered away from where Adam was taking care of the plants. And she wandered close to the tree that they were not supposed to eat from. And while she was by the tree, she heard a voice and it sounded like it was coming from the tree. She looked up, what was that? Who was talking? And she saw a beautiful serpent in that tree, the tree that she was not supposed to be near. And the serpent said, take some of this fruit and try it. Oh no, God said we were not supposed to eat from that tree. 
Oh, God does not want you to be like him. That's why he said you should not eat that fruit. If you eat that fruit, you will become smart. God just doesn't want you to be like him. Now, that was the first mistake that Eve made. She listened to the lie that the serpent told about God. And she said, that fruit does look really good. And she picked one. And then she took a bite. And it was delicious. Pretty soon she heard Adam coming and she said, Adam, Adam, try this fruit. And Adam was very, very sad when he saw the fruit she was eating. He knew that that was the fruit that they were not supposed to eat. But he did not want to be without Eve, so he took the fruit also, and he ate it. Now Adam and Eve chose to listen to the serpent, even though the serpent was telling a lie. They had been warned about that tree and told that if they ate from that tree, they would die. But they ate anyway. They made a wrong choice. God came to visit them every day in the garden. And that day, when they heard him coming, they were frightened because they had disobeyed. So they ran away and tried to hide themselves. from God. And God looked for them in the garden. And of course, God knew where they were. And he found them. And when he saw what they had done, he was very, very sad. He was so sad. And they said, we're sorry, we're sorry, we're sorry. And he knew that they were sorry. And he forgave them. But Sometimes, even when we're sorry, we still have to have the consequences of what we did. The consequences for Adam and Eve were that they would have to go out of their beautiful garden because they couldn't be allowed to go and eat the tree of life all the time. So God placed an angel in the garden and the angel had a flaming sword to keep people out of the garden. They could no longer live in their garden. Now, they had to dig and toil for their food. There was no food just growing for them. They had to dig and plant their own food. And the animals that had been so friendly to them were suddenly frightened and ran and hid from them. They didn't want to stay around them anymore. Everything changed in the world. It changed because now they couldn't be close to God anymore. They couldn't live in their beautiful garden anymore. Now they had to work really hard to get their food. And it was very sad. But God made a way out of that dilemma. He made a plan to bring them back to him again. God's plan was that he would send his son Jesus into the world as a man to show us how we should live and to die for us, to die for our sins. Now, Adam and Eve chose to disobey God, and that was a sin. But sin is anything that we think, say, or do that hurts ourselves or others or God. Sin is a separation from God. God gave us the choice. He didn't say, you have to love me and obey me. What he said was, I love you, and I want you to love me back. But I want it to be your decision, your choice to love me. Every day we have a lot of decisions that we have to make, choices that we make, choice to say 
to mommy and daddy, yes, mommy, I will clean my room, and then we go do it. Or the opposite choice where we shout at mommy and daddy and say, no, I don't want to do that. God has given us the choice. When we show love and kindness to others, we have made a good choice. But when we show anger to others, we have made a wrong choice. Sometimes it's hard to say we're sorry for our wrong choices. But when Adam and Eve sinned, they knew that they had hurt themselves and they had hurt God. So they said they were sorry. God forgave them. But the sad part was that you still have to take the consequences of what you did. Because sometimes the consequences cannot be changed. But through Jesus, God's Son, we can be brought back to God. He gives us forgiveness and He gives us guidance to make the right choices. We can say our prayers and ask Jesus to give us the right choices to make. We can look at our Bible, and if you're too young to read it yet, Mommy and Daddy can read it to you and help you in that way. You can choose to be kind and helpful. You can choose to share with others. God loves you so much that he wants to live in your heart and help you to choose the right things to do. Well, let's go ahead and learn our memory verse now. And it is a new memory verse. So you listen and see what you think. The memory verse comes from James chapter 4, verse 17. If you know what is right and do not do it, that is sin for you. James 4, verse 17. If you know what is right and you do not do it, that is sin for you. James 4, verse 17. So sometimes if you wonder, is this a sin or not? If you know that it is not the right thing to do, then that makes it a sin for you. If you know what is right and you do not do it, then that is sin for you. James 4, verse 17. Remember, sin is anything that we think, say, or do that will hurt others, will hurt ourselves, and will hurt God. Well, sometimes the smallest choices have a big impact. Adam and Eve lost their home, and they had to work very hard. And when they got old, they would die. God not, did not intend for them to die. He wanted them to live forever, and he wanted us to live forever. But they made a wrong choice. We can try to change that choice in our hearts by making the right choices. Now, I have a craft for you today. And it is a little booklet. Oops, that's the back. This is the front. It says, The Garden of Eden. God made many animals. And you can color the animals. And then on the inside it says, God made a beautiful garden. And he gave the garden to Adam and Eve. But Adam and Eve did not obey God, and they lost their beautiful garden. Now, when you first see the page on the website, it will look like this. It might look a little funny because some things seem to be upside down. But when you fold it, it will become a little booklet. So you're going to fold it this way first, and then you'll fold it in the half like that and then you'll have your little booklet. Let's go ahead and bow our heads and say a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, please help us to remember Adam and Eve and how they made a wrong choice and it made them very sad and they lost their home. And Lord, help us to make the right choices. Help us to look to Jesus and to your word, the Bible, to know, to know the good choices that we should make. Amen. 
Well, I hope you had a good time today. I will see you again next week. Have fun. Goodbye.